That's the please come to order. <clears throat> Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that we adjourn the current legislative day. Seeing that there are no um, communications, the House will stand adjourned. That's the please come to order. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Baumbach. Present. Mr. Baumbach, present. Ms. Bennett. Present. Ms. Bennett, present. Mr. Bence. Present. Mr. Bence, present. Ms. Bolden. Present. Ms. Bolden, present. Mr. Brady. Present. Mr. Brady, present. Mrs. Briggs King. Present. Mrs. Briggs King, present. Mr. Bush. Present. Mr. Bush, present. Mr. Carson. Present. Carson, present. Mr. Chikwocha. Present. Mr. Chikwocha, present. Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins. Present. Mr. Collins, present. Mrs. Dorsey Walker. Present. Excuse me. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, present. Mr. Cook. Present. Cook, oh, present. present. Mr. Dukes. Present. Mr. Dukes, present. Mr. Gray. Present. Mr. Gray, present. Mrs. Griffith. Present. Mrs. Griffith, present. Mrs. Heffernan. Present. Mrs. Heffernan, present. Mr. Hensley. Mr. Hensley. <coughs> Mr. Hensley, absent. Mr. Jakes. Present. Mr. Jakes, present. Mrs. Johnson. Present. Mrs. Johnson, present. Mr. Q. Johnson. Present. Mr. Q. Johnson, present. Mr. Kowalko. Present. Mr. Kowalko, present. Mrs. Longhurst. Present. Mrs. Longhurst, present. Mr. Lynn. Present. Mr. Lynn, present. Mr. Matthews. Present. Mr. Matthews, present. Mrs. Minor Brown. Present. Mrs. Minor Brown, present. Mr. Mitchell. Present. Mr. Mitchell, present. Mr. Morris. Present. Mr. Morris, present. Mr. Osinski. Present. Mr. Osinski, present. Mr. Postles. Present. Mr. Postles, present. Mr. Ramon. Present. Mr. Ramon, present. Mr. Siegfried. Present. Mr. Siegfried, present. Mr. Short. Present. Mr. Sh Mr. Short, present. Mr. Shoup. Present. Mr. Shoup, present. Mr. Smith. Present. Mr. Smith, present. Mr. Smick. Present. Mr. Smick, present. Mr. Spiegelman. Present. Mr. Spiegelman, present. Mr. Vanderwin. Present. This is Mr. Vanderwin, present. Mr. Viola. Present. Mr. Viola, present. Mrs. Williams. Present. Mr. Williams, present. Mr. Yerrick. Present. Mr. Yerrick, present. Mr. Speaker. Present. Mr. Speaker, present. Representative Hensley. Present. Mr. Hensley, from absent to mark present. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals 41 present. Form being present, House of Representatives formally in session. Each member's identity has been authenticated by the presiding officer. The print for today will be offered by Representative Dukes. Ms. Gray. Lord, we thank you for this day, this time that we can come together as leaders that represent uh, every area of our state. We pray, Lord, for wisdom as we move forward, even in this unprecedented time. We ask you, Lord, for wisdom that comes from you and uh, the affairs that we have to uh, face in the near future with our legislative session. We pray that you give those, uh, especially on joint finance and bond, that you uh, be with them and guide them, giving them direction. Lord, we lift up and we remember um, our military and all those serving. And Lord, as we have celebrated Memorial Day this past week and remember all those who have given uh, the ultimate sacrifice of their lives so that we have the freedom to do what we do now today. And we give you all the thanks in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. at this time, I would like to have a <clears throat> moment of silence. We have a few people we need to recognize. I'm going to go to uh, representative Siegfried, whose wife passed away recently. Uh, he would like to have a few comments. Representative Siegfried. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Um, would appreciate the opportunity uh, to provide a memorial in recognition for my wife. Someone once said, one plus one is one. Though you may think this quote odd, I say it makes perfect sense. And let me tell you why. In a small chapel on the campus of Villanova University some 40 years ago, Mary B. Murphy and I were married. We loved and honored each other as one. We rejoiced together in good times as one. 
and in bad times we fought and separated as two. I ask you, can there be one without two? We were not poor, nor were we rich as one, and our oneness kept us together in sickness and in health. All 41 of us have our own story of marriage, but on this day, we honor amongst others, a lady from Ireland who I have had the pleasure to love and be loved and the responsibility of being with her as one until death do its part. God bless you, Mary Bernadette Murphy. God bless you, Mary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Ray, for sharing that with us. Uh, Representative uh, Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We also have some other losses in our caucus. Um, Representative Quinn Johnson, father-in-law, and his wife, Julie's father-in-law passed away. Vincent E. Martina, we'd like to have a moment of silence for him. Also, Representative Stephanie T. Bolden, her nephew, Charles Douglas MacArthur Bolden, and great-nephew, Kirk Douglas Bolden, both passed away also. Um, and also like to put out prayers and thoughts for the families of the families that lost, lost their loved ones to the coronavirus. So if we could have a moment of silence for them also. Yeah. You bow your head for the moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Larry Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, back in 1962, President Kennedy, Kennedy signed a proclamation recognizing May 15th as National Peace Officer Memorial Service. Over the years, I've talked to this group and I can say quite comfortably that you have made a overwhelming effort to attend our local services every May. Um, and I can tell you in the last few years, it's been extremely well attended. And it's not, it does not go unnoticed by the men and women of law enforcement here in Delaware. Each, each year in the beginning of May, the speaker and the president pro temp, along with members of this general assembly sit under that tent with the members of, fa of the families that have lost loved ones in the line of duty. And I can tell you that the comments that are made are very significant. And I talked to a lot of the families afterwards and they very much appreciate how much this General Assembly recognizes them and their lost loved ones. Uh, I thought it would only be appropriate since we just missed the service this year and normally we do it on the green in uh, the first week of May. Um, so I would ask that everyone remember the families and the members of law enforcement have, prov have provided and given the ultimate sacrifice to protect us and keep us safe in Delaware. I do know across the country, there's well over a hundred law enforcement officers that have given their life as a result of the COVID-19. Uh, I would also mention that we remember all first responders, EMS, fire services, doctors, and nurses in this uh, month and the job that they're doing to try to keep us safe across the nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Larry. <clears throat> Let's hope next year we'll be back under the tent. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance. To the flag of the flag of the United States, States, States of America, America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God, and with liberty and justice for all. Minutes of the le previous legislative day have been posted without objection, will be accepted as posted. I'm glad to see everybody here today, even though it's not the way we normally see each other in session. We are making history today in Delaware. For more than 220 years, the General Assembly has met in person in our state's capital to conduct legislative business. The House and the Senate have considered tens of thousands of pieces of legislation during their time, 
ranging from the mundane to the profound. But today we will consider one piece of legislation in a completely different manner. For the first time in Delaware history, a legislative body is meeting virtually. The coronavirus pandemic that has gripped our world has fundamentally changed our lives and we are taking steps today to change with it. In a few minutes, we will introduce and hopefully pass a resolution that will allow the General Assembly to do its business virtually, to consider legislation and vote on it remotely. While far from ideal, it is a necessary step during these difficult times to ensure that our work will continue during this crisis. It is rare that you get to experience something historic, and after a while, this will most likely seem routine. We all have been conducting and participating in virtual meetings for a couple of months now, but I wanted to acknowledge the step we're taking today and hope that it is a very temporary one and that we return to Legislative Hall in the near future. So thank you. Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the rules for be suspended, which interfere with the introduction of and action of the House Concurrent Resolution Number 85. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded that rules be suspended, suspended for introduction of an action on House Concurrent Resolution Number 85. Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, House Concurrent Resolution Number 85, accepting and approving the May 14th, 2020 actions of the President Pro Tem of the State Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives declaring an emergency under Article 5, Section 5, Article 2, and Section 1, Article 17 of the Delaware Constitution and adopting rules and proce of procedures for conducting virtual meetings of the General Assembly and its legislative committees during an emergency. Mr. Speaker, this concludes the reading of House Concurrent Resolution 85 by title only. Thank you, Mr. Puffer. All in favor of suspending the rules for introduction of an action on House Concurrent Resolution number 85, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and the rules are suspended. Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Over the past four months, the nation has been struck by a devastating virus that we have not seen in our lifetimes. The COVID-19 virus has fundamentally impacted our society and taken the lives of nearly 100,000 Americans. Delaware is not immune to this virus with 9,000 confirmed cases and more than 330 Delawareans that have passed away. Hundreds of families throughout our state have lost someone to this pandemic and our hearts go out to everyone suffering and hurting during these difficult times. As this tragic as the situation has been, Delaware has weathered this storm better than other states. Governor Carney put Delaware in a state of emergency to slow the spread of virus and to make sure we did not overwhelm our healthcare systems. And we are successful, but we still must remain diligent. Throughout this crisis, we've been blessed by the selfishness of frontline workers who have treated thousands of COVID-19 patients. We in the House of Representatives owe a debt of gratitude to these frontline workers and to the many essential workers up and down our state, working in grocery stores and the food industry who have kept us fed during this crisis. Thank you to all who have kept our state running and our residents healthy. To what day we are doing something that has never been done in Delaware history. The General Assembly is holding a virtual session for the very first time. Normally, we would be sitting together in the House Chamber and Legislative Hall, surrounded by hundreds of staff, officials, advocates, reporters, and members of the public. But these are different times, and we have to take action to protect the health and safety of our legislators, staff, and the public. That is why we are taking this unprecedented step of meeting virtually. We all look forward to the day when we can gather together in legislative hall again, safely to conduct business. But until then, this resolution that we are passing today will enable us to continue working legislatively for all of our constituents throughout the state. Mr. Speaker, I would like a roll call. I have uh, Representative Collins. I'm looking for you in the audience here, uh, Rick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, yes, I, I have to make a statement here. I'm going to read a short statement to make sure I get it right. I, I will say, as for our audience, that while the COVID disease has certainly been a major concern, the time has gone by. If you look at the statistics, I do not believe that it 
supports the emergency measure we're doing at the present time. But that's not the play for here is not the place for that to be. I'd like to read a statement about HCR 85. I do not believe HCR 85 is allowed by the Constitution of the State of Delaware. Paragraph 5 of Article 2 says the General Assembly in times of emergency may sit and meet elsewhere but nowhere is it stated or implied that it refers to anything other than meeting as a body in one location. The fact that members are required to be in physical contact with our desk during roll call would certainly seem to back that up. Paragraph nine of article two states that the house can determine the rules of its proceedings, but that doesn't speak to the location of a session at all. Paragraph one of article 17, continuity of government is the controlling paragraph. The final state sentence states, the General Assembly shall in all respects conform to the requirements of this Constitution, except to the extent that in the judgment of the General Assembly, to do so would be impracticable or would cause undue delay. The definition of impracticable is totally different than the word impractical. According to the Cambridge Dictionary and others, it means impossible to do in an effective way. While it might be somewhat inconvenient, we could meet in person at auditoriums and gymnasiums in any school in this state or at Dover Downs. There are numerous facilities that would allow the social distancing that would make our members feel safe. This is a time when we, as elected representatives of our state, should show courage and leadership as our citizens begin the difficult process of getting back to normal. For these reasons, I will be voting no against HCR 85. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Collins. Just uh, in answer to uh, your comments real quick, uh, we have had attorneys from the House, both the Republican side and the Democrat side, attorneys from the Senate, and attorney from the Legislative Council downstairs. They have all met together. They've researched this, and they have assured me that we are permissible to do this. <clears throat> so I just want to put that out there as a counterbalance. So, um, Representative Longhurst. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Clark, please call the roll in House Concurrent Resolution number 85. Mr. Baumbach. Yes. Mr. Baumbach, yes. Ms. Bennett. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Bentz. Yes. Mr. Benz, yes. Ms. Bolden. Ms. Bolden. Yes. Ms. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Brady, yes. Mrs. Briggs King. Mrs. Briggs King. Mrs. Briggs King. Mrs. Briggs King absent. Mr. Bush. Yes. Mr. Bush, yes. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson, absent. Mr. Chicocha. Yes. Mr. Chicocha, yes. Mr. Collins. No. Mr. Collins, no. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cook, yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker. Yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, yes. Mr. Dukes. Yes. Mr. Dukes, yes. Mr. Gray. Yes. Mr. Gray, yes. Mrs. Griffith. Yes. Mrs. Griffith, yes. Mrs. Heffernan. Yes. Mrs. Heffernan, yes. Mr. Hensley. Yes. Mr. Hensley, yes. Mr. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Jakes, yes. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Johnson, yes. Mr. Q. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Q. Johnson, yes. Mr. Kowalko. Yes. Mr. Kowalka, yes. Mrs. Longhurst. Yes. Mrs. Longhurst, yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Lynn, yes. Mr. Matthews. Yes. Mr. Matthews, yes. Mrs. Minor Brown. Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Mitchell, yes. Mr. Morris. No. Mr. Morris, no. Mr. Osinski. Yes. Mr. Osinski, yes. Mr. Postles. Yes. Mr. Postles, yes. Mr. Ramon. Yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Siegfried. Yes. Mr. Siegfried, yes. Mr. Short. Yes. Mr. Short, yes. Mr. Shoup. Yes. Mr. Shoup, yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Smick. 
Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Spiegelman. Yes. Mr. Spiegelman, yes. Mr. Vanderwin. Yes. Mr. Vanderwin, yes. Mr. Viola. Yes. Mr. Viola, yes. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Yerrick. Yes. Mr. Yerrick, yes. Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker, yes. <laughs> Representative Briggs King. Voting yes. Mrs. Briggs King from absent to voting yes. Representative Carson. Voting yes. Mr. Carson from absent to voting yes. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals 39 yes, two no. I received a Constitution Majority House concurrent resolution number 85 is declared passed. Thank you. Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Are there any communications? Rich? No, no, there are not. If there are no communications, I move that we recess to the call of the chair. House stands in recess to call the chair. <laughs>